Oh, this is going to be fun. It's been a while since I've done this. Today we're starting an entire new review series, an episode-by-episode look at the 2003 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Turtles media, I haven't read all the comics or anything, but I am a huge fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in general. I love the concept, I think it is the perfect blend of silly and serious. I watched the original cartoon when it was a thing, I watched the 2012, was it, cartoon? I absolutely love that one. It's my favorite of the bunch. I haven't gotten around to watching the newest one yet, but I hear very good things about it, and I have plans to do so. And I watched this one and its sequels back in the day, and I liked it. I don't remember liking it a lot, but it was enjoyable. It was the thing that I would watch pretty regularly when it was on and I needed something to do. And really the only reason I didn't get into this show more than I did is because it was just very tonally different from the Turtles stuff that I encountered in the past. I was still relatively young at that point in time, right? I wasn't really thinking critically about media yet. It wasn't really a thing on my mind. So I didn't really give this much more than a passing thought. It was something I would watch to kill time. And when it started to get like a little more complicated towards the end, I don't remember specifics anymore, I, ju I just kind of stopped bothering with it and then I really fell off with the aforementioned sequels but I don't dislike the show and I certainly don't remember it as a bad show so when somebody suggested upon hearing that I liked the 2012 version that I go back and watch and review this one something different than like one of my all-time favorite things and, and give it a shot give it a proper shot I was intrigued by the idea so here we are that's what we're doing today and for probably several years and going into the future. Let's not kid ourselves. And I'm excited. After watching this first episode, I'm kind of hyped for this. Uh, it's worth noting that where the original, uh, was it wasn't like an 80s show, the original 80s cartoon was very much a modified comedic take on the Turtles media we'd gotten prior to that, which was just comics, I, I, I believe. And whereas the 2012 version was kind of an attempt to bring all aspects of Turtles media together into one thing and make a definitive version, kind of like the aligned continuities Transformers Prime did for Transformers. This show was trying to do a more straight adaptation of the Turtles comics of the time period, which always took the subject matter a little more seriously, while still being recognizable as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In fact, I would argue that some elements of this first episode, they only really hit as hard as I think they're supposed to, if you have some knowledge of Turtles media already to compare to. And it would make sense that you did. This came out in 2003, like I said, which is obviously quite a ways after the 1980s, but that show was just so prolific. Like, like people still talk about it today. It, it, had, it had a long life on home video releases. I remember I had several tapes of the original show that I'd rewatch over and over again, even when the show wasn't on the air anymore, as far as I know. It had one of the largest toy lines of all time, I believe, with everything from figures and play sets to like, like games and stuff. And that's not to mention video games based on it too. The movies released, and there were ancillary releases, like a, like, like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles musical, for example, that uh, Phelous has, has reviewed on his YouTube channel you guys want to check it out and like a Christmas special and stuff with people in just the worst turtles costumes telling nonsensical stories with these characters but kids still enjoyed them the releases still had success and they kept knowledge of the turtles in pop culture well after that original show ended even amongst people who weren't fans of the comics and weren't the kinds of people to be fans of the comics to know about the comics. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, owing in part to the fact that that's just such a memorable concept, it's so ridiculous that it's, you remember it. The title tells you everything you need to know about the concept and to have at least a baseline understanding of it, and it's so memorable. They're, they're just known. They're a thing that people at least know of. They're like the USS Enterprise. People know what that is. They know what the turtles are, even if they don't know who the turtles are, if you know what I mean. And so it made sense to expect that someone going into this show would have at least some knowledge 
of the Turtles already. Like, you're going to hope to hook fans of the original show, or, like, maybe, like, their kid siblings, or maybe even their kids, if, you know, it was an older fan at the time, right? Uh, through the fact that these are returning fans, that the, the older person in this scenario is a returning fan of the franchise. But also, like, you can just kind of expect people are going to kind of know what the turtles are already. Like, when the episode opens and they're in the sewers training to be ninjas, like, that doesn't need any explanation. Because they're the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and, like, everybody knows they live in the sewer under New York City. That's just a thing that everyone knows. But I think the most interesting thing that we're supposed to contrast between this and the original cartoon, specifically through our pop culture knowledge of what the original cartoon was like, is the Turtles' personalities. They're still each distinct. Like, Leonardo's still a leader, Rav is still a hothead, Donnie's still smart, Mikey's still a jokester. But the differences are a little more subtle in some ways, but more extreme in others. Like, Raf is way more of a hothead in this than he was in other stuff. But he's not, like, as goofily dumb sometimes as he was in the original show. He's actually a pretty intelligent guy, too. And th they definitely take themselves a little more seriously, and the show definitely takes them a little more seriously than the original show did. This is more an action-adventure show with some quippiness and some comedy in it rather than a comedy show with some action elements like the original one was, and that contrast is important. These are a more mature version of the characters. These turtles swear. They say shell instead of a word that rhymes with that, but it's still very clear and made very clear in the opening theme song of the show that that's what's happening. And that says something about them. In fact, it almost makes the show feel like it's trying to be the edgy version of this kid's show. But thankfully, the show itself doesn't really feel like that. Like, even when the more mystical and the more super science elements of Turtles as a franchise end up coming into this story later, I remember this very strongly. They feel more grounded and like they have more rules and limitations placed on them. And while I wouldn't say that that's my favorite take on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, it's definitely a take, and I respect it a lot. It's one of the things I love about this franchise the most, is that there are so many different iterations of the Turtles genre that if you don't like the one that's ongoing right now, you can just, you can just wait like a couple years, and there will be something new that you may like better. Or you can go back and find an earlier iteration that's more your thing. It's, it's very broad and very varied. And I, I respect it a lot for that. I respect it a lot for being that and still managing to work. And it's why I don't have any issue even with the more recent movies. Like, I, I didn't really like Out of the Shadows. I thought the first one was pretty okay. I didn't really like Out of the, Out of the Shadows very much. But like, even though I, I like the first couple of the older movies better, I'm still fine with these new ones existing. It doesn't hurt anybody. And somebody might love them. And I don't want to take that away from them, right? Uh, on top of all of this, on top of all of this, it's already really good, right? Most of it just, just by virtue of being a Turtles property. The story of this one's really good, too. Like, it's a fantastic introduction to these characters. This is the episode Things Change. And yes, that is the same title as the last episode of Teen Titans. And yes, Teen Titans is the show that I just finished reviewing and that this review series is going to take the slot of. And yes, I do think that's a funny coincidence. And no, it is not on purpose. It is a coincidence. Still funny nonetheless. In this episode, while the turtles are working with their master splinter, this large humanoid rat, which is also just, just a fantastic concept, on their stealth ninja training, some crazy mysterious robots that are left unexplained by the end of this episode, by the way, come up from underground and start attacking them, and this causes their lair to cave in on itself, separating the turtles from Splinter. He gives them a location to meet up with him deeper in the sewer, and heads off there himself, but the turtles end up having to take a detour over the surface, a place that they're not really supposed to go, since they're giant turtles. People are going to think that's weird, and Splinter doesn't want them interacting with the surface world more than they have to, for that reason. It's, it's just... It's a level of danger that he doesn't want to see them subjected to. But they have no choice, so they head over the surface, and while they're on the surface, 
Raphael is forced to hide from some people who are approaching and being kind of impulsive and a little bit dumb in situations like this, he jumps into an open armored car, which is driven off by the Purple Dragons gang, who are stealing it. The others follow after him, keeping up with the armored car well enough to follow it to its eventual location. They free Raph using Donatello's technical knowledge and end up fighting the Purple Dragons in, in a non-fight. <laughs> like, they don't show any of it at all. Almost feeling like they were trying to cheap out of the animation in this episode. But that's not the case, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, meanwhile, Splinter has reached the location that he was supposed to meet them at, but he's continued to be hounded by these weird robots, and though he defeats them because he's a master ninja and the most powerful one of the five main characters that we've met so far, uh, the robots once again came up out of the ground, and in doing so, they weaken the ground beneath Splinter. He falls through and ends up in a new chamber that they can call their new home. But as all this is happening, as the purple dragons are run off, the turtles up on the surface find themselves surrounded by black-clad ninjas. And while they fight well, in fact, this is where the animation budget of the episode really steps up to show off the kind of action that this show can deliver. There's just too many of them, and these guys are also skilled enough to be dangerous on their own. So the turtles retreat in the armored car, they drive it into the sewer to the place they were supposed to meet Splinter, and then he takes them to the chamber he found. And it, it's just it's re so recognizable as the ideal turtle's lair that, that obviously this is where they're going to end up living. It's, just, it's very good. Like, through this entirely unforeseen situation, they are brought to this new place that's going to be the main hub of the show going forward. But on top of that, meeting the Purple Dragons and meeting those ninjas, the Foot Clan, are going to drive the plot of this show forward for the foreseeable future. These are their first recurring enemies. And through them, we as the audience are introduced to another of their recurring enemies, this Asian-looking man who meets with the leader of that Purple Dragons group that the Turtles showed up and seemingly executes him for his failure. And while this is compelling entirely on its own, if you know anything about Turtles lore, it becomes even more so. Specifically, the things that interest me the most here are that these are clearly the Foot Clan ninjas. And we know the Foot Clan, if you know anything about Turtles lore, we know the Foot Clan works for the Shredder. And this guy, this Asian-looking guy sipping tea and executing people for their failure, is pretty recognizable as the Shredder. And the Shredder leads the Foot Clan. So even though we don't really see him with the Foot Clan here, we see him with the leader of the Purple Dragons, and that means that the Foot Clan were there to be back up for the Purple Dragons. They're working together. Not only that, but the armored car that they drive back to the sewer, I could be wrong about this, but it seems like that's going to become their turtle van. The turtle-themed vehicle that the turtles drive in every iteration of the story. Even the mysterious robots that I know are called Mousers, I know are going to come back later. They're a recurring thing in turtles lore as well and the fact that they weren't revealed like what they were in this episode they were left a mystery by the end tells us there's gonna be some level of serialization in this show too there wasn't a ton of action in this episode but the animation in and of itself was good it was solid i'm watching a fairly low quality version of this a fairly low quality rip which is the one i've been using in the video as well but even through the lack of quality you could tell the animation in this is pretty good it's pretty high quality even for the time and it gets really good when the ninjas show up when the foot soldiers show up that is literally the joke by the way also they were um they were play on the hand of the ninjas from daredevil because i don't know if you guys know this teenage mutant ninja turtle started as a daredevil parody the same chemical that gave daredevil his blindness but his his extra senses is the chemical that mutated the turtles i didn't know if you guys know that and so his enemy is the hand, theirs is the foot. Uh, but the Foot Clan ninjas, when they're fighting the Foot Clan ninjas, there's like so genuinely fantastically animated and choreographed martial arts sequences here. There's some flashier stuff too, but there's like some actual recognizable martial arts stuff happening. And it's, it's just very, very good. Like in particular, this scene where Leo's fighting off some other sword guys, and they show some really intricate details of the swordplay. Like, it's flashy, movie-style ninja swordplay, but, like, 
it's still recognizable as being very technically complex. And even though the turtles end up having to retreat, their showing is still good enough here that you don't feel like they disappointed as fighters. You could tell they're skilled, that it was really just the extra numbers that their opponents wielded against them that made the difference. Literally the only legitimate, I think, complaint that I have about this episode is that, one, there were some jokey moments, especially from Mikey, but they felt more quippy than actually jokey, and none of them really made me laugh out loud. Like, I like the dynamic between the four turtles. These are four brothers, right? They're the adopted brothers of their adopted father, Splinter the Rat. And they feel like brothers here. They pick on each other. They, they wrap each other on the head when they're annoying. And so Mikey's humor in this felt more like he was picking at his brothers. It was stuff that would get at them, not necessarily stuff that would make a general audience laugh, right? And that makes sense. But, like, Turtles is an inherently silly concept, just in general. And the 2012 series has so many laugh-out-loud moments that do not compromise the show's more serious tone when it portrays itself seriously. So I do feel like that's a weakness. There's not as much humor in this as I'd like, but that's fine. That's just not the kind of show this is. That's a me thing more than anything else, I guess. Though it's still something that I do think fans of the franchise should keep in mind when viewing this. But there's also a couple moments in this where I feel like really strong moments were ruined by the dialogue taking things just a tad too far. Like, for example, when the turtles show up to that chamber that they were supposed to be Splinter in, and then he, he goes to take them to the other chamber that's going to be their new home, he says, now come, my sons, let me take you home. And if they had just cut from there to the next location, the, the hallway outside of that chamber, I think it would have been so much stronger. But they had, instead, one of the turtles, I think it was Wrath, be like, but, but... Master, we don't have a home. It was destroyed, remember? And then he says, I think I have solved that problem, or something along those lines. And it just... It deflated the moment. And then, like, another example. At the end, when, when the guy that we're eventually, I'm assuming, going to learn is the Shredder, when he goes to execute that Purple Dragons guy, again, I'm, I'm assuming that's what he did, the Purple Dragons guy is like, please, sir, I promise I won't fail you again. And, and the Shredder says, no. He won't. And if they had just cut from there to the, again, the next location, a zoomed out shot of the building with the guy screaming, I think it would have been so much stronger. But instead, the Shredder goes on to say, you will never fail me again. And it's like, yeah, we got it from when, when you said that. We get it. You're going to kill the guy. It's fine. <laughs> it just would have been better. It wasn't bad. It just would have been stronger if they had thought this through, I think, just a, just a tad bit more. Still, this was a really good introduction to these characters. We got a feel for their personalities, for their strengths, for their weaknesses, for the kinds of stories this can tell, for the world, and for the sorts of mysteries that we're going to be dealing with very early on. Like, I, I think probably my favorite scene of the episode that wasn't, like, an action sequence, I guess it kind of was, though, was, like, the very beginning, how succinctly they introduced us to the strengths and weaknesses of the characters during that stealth ninja training I talked about. It's just very good. It's a very good scene for introducing us to the kinds of characters these people are. And there were multiple scenes like that throughout the episode that touched on, like, the different kinds of skills that the characters have and comparing them to one another. Like, there was even a scene that suggested to me that Michelangelo, despite not being the best ninja and not being the smartest and not being the strongest either, really, is kind of the best general athlete. Like, he's able to outrun the others. And I thought... Like, that's an interesting touch, because he's the one who does, like, skateboarding and stuff, and other extreme sports stuff, at least in the other iterations. I don't know about this one. It was a good, solid, introductory episode, is my point, that I think introduced these characters and their dynamic very well, handling multiple character introductions very well, while also still having some real substance to it. Like, I still think that once I have completed this journey talking about this show, I'll like the 2012 version better. I still think that's my Turtles, but I'm, I'm still really hyped to watch this show. I'm looking forward to it a lot, in fact. As per usual, though, guys, what do you think of the very first episode, Things Change, of the 2003 iteration of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if you have seen it? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. 
And while you're down there, you might as well like the video, share it with anyone else you think would enjoy my content, subscribe if you haven't. You can also check out links to my various social medias as well as the many ways you can help out the channel. Those will be in the video description, but either way, this has been AJ22 and I will talk to you guys later.